In this video, I want to go over a screenshot tool known as KSNP. Now, KSNP is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux users. Now, this is a very powerful screenshot tool. And if you found this video on YouTube, I will provide a link below the video to where it shows you how to install it and some of the features that sets it off different from other type of screenshot tools. And this is open source, which means it's free and it's not full of spyware, adware, or junkware. Now let's take a look at what KSNP is. KSNP is a QT-based cross-platform screenshot tool that provides many annotation features for your screenshots. Now a lot of screenshot tools has the annotation features and that's not really what sets this off from other ones. Now a lot of simple screenshot tools just allows you to take a screenshot then you can use another type of annotation tool to annotate your image but this has it built in. One thing that sets this one different from others is is that you can install a plugin that allows you to have the OCR which is the optical character recognition where if you take a screenshot of images or have an images uh, of text within the screenshot you can actually pull the text out because you can't copy and paste a text image like if I look at this text here there's no way I can copy and paste that but let's look it's full of features and I didn't even add all the features and I'm not going to read those now since it is for a variety of different platforms you can click on several of the links here I think if you click this one it's from SourceForge that you can get a variety of different installation files and even back up and get some older ones if you're on a Linux system you can download the the snap version from the snap store you can get the flat hub or like the portable version from the app image and there's a variety of installations from github if you click here you'll see that there's a variety of installations at the time of making this video it's at version 1.10 and I downloaded the dev file since I'm using Ubuntu Mate 22.04 the long-term support so once you download the installation file you just double click on it like for Windows users now Mac user you drag it to a folder that allows you to use it but in this case my dev file I double click on it it opens my package install I click the install package, put my password, wait till it says same version is already installed. And then if it's not in the menu, you can reboot your system or log out and log back in. And it should be in the accessories and in KSNP. Now, it may be somewhere else if you're using a different Linux distribution. Now, once you have it running in the background, you'll see an icon on your system tray. You'll see some options of different ways that you can take screenshots. You can open, you can save, you can copy, you can upload, or even quit. Now, here is a picture that I've taken of screenshots. You've got annotation tools on the side. You've got a lot of toolbars across the top and menus. As you can see, you can use your typical annotation tools, and I've labeled each tool from here and in a moment when I show you. If you don't remember, you don't have to go to my webpage. You can hover over it, and it has a tool tip showing you what they are. Within the options settings menu, I have a little slideshow that goes through each of these. Now, most screenshot tools has a setting this if you look through it before you install it you can see how to go through and make the changes that you'll probably want to make the changes to so since I already have this on the web page I'm not going to go through all the settings to speed up this video now as you can see here when you're loading different images it's almost like the web browser where you go from tab to tab you can switch from image to image instead of opening and closing opening and closing you can tab from one image to the other now here's the part that allows you to get the optical character recognition you need to download a and I provide the links to it you can get them here you can you need to download the actual plugin for the system that you have in my case I have a deb system now this is kind of a continuous like if you're running the nightly builds I guess you can say but this also works for the stable build in this case I have the most current stable build and I installed this plugin. Now I recommend you before you install it after you install KSNP to close the program. So once you install it, then reopen it and it should be working in your system. So if you install it and forget to close it, when you click on option, the OCR will probably be dimmed out. You need to close it and reopen it and it should be dark. Now if it's not, what you do is you go in your settings, click on to the plugin, and I'll let me show you this. Let me go ahead and take a screenshot of the current screen. All right, now here I got all the annotation tools, but since I'm focusing on the OCR and that's the whole screen, let me go here. Mine's bold because I have it installed. If it's not, what you go is to the settings, click on the plugins, and if there's no plugin installed for the OCR, you just hit the detect. If you've got it installed, it should find it on your system. You just click, hit OK, and it should be bold here. If not, just quit the program 
relaunch it and it should be bold and in a few moments I'll show you how the OCR works now let me show you something within the file menu when I first install this I would go to file and hit quit that's what I'm so used to doing when I'm running an application I want to exit to close the program to close this screen but leave it running in the background hit close window so that way when you hit close window it's still running in the background so if you set up the shortcut keys to run this you're not closing it down to where it's not working and have to relaunch it so this right here I recommend if you're only closing this application is to hit for file is to go to close window rather than quit here's your annotation tools like you can start from here you can put double arrows you can put a single arrow like if I wanted to point at something or if I wanted to make an arrow say well that's from hit this point all the way to over here you can got the double ended arrows you got the align so if you wanted to underline something you can choose the different colors here for the different type of choices you've got your pen where you can write on your screen let me undo all this it's getting kind of cluttery you've got your highlighter so if you wanted to highlight something on your screen you got it different from a you can mark a rectangle area so if I wanted to make that look a little nicer you got the rectangle area or you can change it to an elliptical making it round so if you got something you want to focus on say talking about that building you can highlight that so let me undo all of that because it's blurry I mean, it gets cluttery here you can put text on it so you can come here and type like this is text you got your uh, text with a pointer so you can come here and then write text you can change the font size and the fonts on here you also have your this way you can do it and then type in your text so there's different ways you can add text with pointers you can add just text by itself on your screen so let me undo here you can put numbers so if you wanted to number things oh, I'm still on the last one click the numbers so if you wanted to number things on the image you can do so as well undo you've got your number with a pointer so if I want to number that object number that object and then talking about that building that way they can see what you're talking about when you're talking about the things in order you've also got your numbers with an arrow and I think you can understand that here you can pixelate there's two ways you can blur things let's say I want to blur the the day and then I want to pixelate the time you can see the difference between pixelated makes the pixels very large this just gives out a blurred image so if you have like a license plate on the back of a car or you're taking a picture of your home you don't want your address on the internet you can use this to, to blur that you've got your different shapes you got your rectangles that you can do and you can actually fill in the rectangles and you also have your circles that you can or any lips that you can make this one's already with the fill in you can go and choose no color up here where the fill bucket you can say to, to make the circle without it filled in so that's got a lot of nice annotation features but I think the key thing we want to look at now is the ability to use the OCR I actually I taken a screenshot while I go and I left it on here so let me go ahead and close this out and I'll show you how we can do that let's open up a screen where we have some text and so here is like the features so let me go up back and open case snip say new and I want to choose this right here to make it larger I, I had this on the screen I could have took that off but anyhow I want to get this text here there's no way I can select this on my screen and select that text so if I have this image here I can go to options OCR it processes it and then now I can select the text within this right click choose copy and paste it within a word document a LibreOffice document or whatever in an email and so it makes it easy to pull text out of an image so let me go ahead and close this out so it's a great feature it's kind of one of the features that sets this screenshot tool uh, makes it kind of different from the others is because it does have that built-in OCR and you can install additional plugins so that it enhances this even more and I'm not going to go into all the plugins because that's not this actual program but the OCR is from the creator that actually created this it's on the same github web page the continuous build if you look up here go to ksnip this is a plugin these are the things that are from the creator so hopefully if you're a windows user a mac user or a linux user you'll give ksnip a try if you're looking for a powerful 
screenshot tool. Now most people, the average person's just looking to take a screenshot and if later they want to annotate it, they can use a different program. But if you're someone that's creating a web page or a teacher that you want to put things on or a business and you like to annotate or even take the text out of an image, then this might be a program that you want to install on your system to prevent you from opening and closing multiple programs. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you and have a great day.